So I've recently done a how to frame generator tutorial for beginners mate, for beginners showing how to use frame generator an absolute basic bare bones I've never used it before and I need to make some frames level. A few interesting comments were raised regarding uh, how you do end profiles that kind of thing because that's something that inventors seriously lacks with. Frame generator is great for making nice fancy models but lacks massively with end profile detailing and helping you make the stuff. So someone said well how do you do tube coping which is like for example printing out uh, a template for the end profile of a tube so you want to make something like this you've got it fine in the digital model but how do you roll it out and create this to then create that to then wrap it around the tube like that yeah it's not easy it's not easy <laughs> and doing it in inventor is definitely not easy so i'm just going to show you one of the methods that i that i've found that you can do to to create this effect it's not the only way to get to the end result but it's the way that i've found and that's what i'm presenting we're going to create a new bit of tube that comes along here and is notched up against this cross member there so we're going to go into in my subframe here and then we're going to go into insert frame and i'm going to drop uh, an iso Let's use the same form circular hollow section and in terms of size I'll make it a bit smaller than this one here so the notch isn't so extreme let's go for 42.4 by 3 3 mil thick is the same thickness as the other tube mild steel and then we'll drop it down on this cross member there and then click OK all right normally and, and in the tutorial I did say always rename your, your files especially in frame generated to be something unique I'm not going to do that here just to save time but there's our cross member this one here is item number 10 right so that's tube number 10 and at the moment if we just double click into it you can see that the tube terminates at the center line because that's where the sketch line ended so it's kind of going through this member here so we need to cut this back around the body of this tube here and we'll do that with notch so you notch that into that hit apply and then you can see the edges form there and then if we double click this one there you go you can see it's now notched it around there so we've got our end profile but that's kind of where inventors involvement stops it's like i've done the hard work mate it's now on you really uh, but yeah that's a thing that's something we've got to deal with so what we need to do is try and unwrap flatten out this tube and get that profile printed out so how do we do this so we're going to right click on part number 10 which is our new bit of tube and then we're going to open it into a separate window and then this is going to confirm that this is the right bit of tube there's the end profile there and we're going to do a bit of jiggery pokery this isn't all that easy but if you just follow along you'll 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 do it slow and steady wins the race and all that the first thing i'm going to do is convert this tube into sheet metal so we're going to select the convert to sheet metal button and we're going to go into the sheet metal defaults edit the styles and i'm going to change it over to the default millimeters rule change the material to a mild steel and then the thickness is three mil because that's the thickness of the tube and then i have to give credit to jd on the inventor forums for pointing me in the right direction for this one because my little brain couldn't cope with why something wasn't working but you have to go to the default k factor under sheet metal unfold and change this value to one because we're not really flattening out for the purposes of cutting metal so the k factor was applying itself to when to it when i was rolling it out and i, and I want to avoid that so i'm going to change the k factor to one so it doesn't deform the metal as it's being flattened out so we're going to save and close on that we're going to go to the 3d model panel and then we're going to thicken this face disable blending we're going to go with a new solid which is quite important and uh, we're going to go inwards so it's thickening inwards towards the inner tube and then for the distance you can just type in three mil but i'm going to be all clever in that and i'm going to go list parameters and we'll select thickness so the thickness of the the new solid we're creating is always the same thickness as the sheet metal style and then click okay so that'll give us a new solid that's exactly this it's pretty much almost exactly the same form as the original tube which is still actually there but it's going to give us an extra solid body here so we've got solid one which is the original tube solid two which is our new thickened solid so for the solid one we're, we're going to rename, rename that to frame member or whatever doesn't matter and then solid two can be the the coping profile Neat. Uh, once that's done you can turn off frame member just so you don't see that so you don't have two solids overlapping on top of each other uh, and then yeah now we're going to rip and the thing we're interested in is this little split line here right that split line there is what we're going to use to create a rip through the metal to allow us to unfold it so we're going to go to rip on the sheet metal tab rip single point you can go point to point if you've got a notched profile on both ends you can click the point 
at the end of this split line. Where's it gone? There it is. You could pick the point at the end of this split line on both sides of the of the tube. But because I don't have that, when you've got one split line, we're going to go with a single point. The rip face is that, and then the rip point is that point there. And by default, the rip thickness here, right, the, the gap that is going to rip is the sheet metal thickness, but that's too thick. Three mil is going to be too much of a gap. So when we roll this out, we're going to we're going to have lost three mil of material, which isn't great when you're going to end up printing it out and then folding it back around a tube. You're going to be short three mil, so that's not really much good. So the gap size, we're just going to go with 0.1 millimeters, which is apparently the minimum gap value we can go with when it's just a single point. Not sure why, but that's a thing. And a two point, point to point, you can go down to 0 0.001, but it's, I think it's, it's that small anyway, it's irrelevant. Uh, but yeah, that gives us our rip line. We've now ripped uh, a split across the tube, which is going to allow us to just imagine if you were to grab this side and this side and just pull them either way. It's going to now fold out that way and that way. Uh, and then I think we're ready to do it now, mate. I think we can do this. So we're going to go to the sheet metal panel again and we're going to go to unfold. The stationary reference is the outer face. That's going to select this whole body. Uh, for the stationary reference again, we're going to select this plane. And then for the bends, we're just going to select add all bends and then look at that look at that that's given us now our coping profile that's the notch profile flattened out click ok and then there you go so it's it's hidden the tube because the tube solid body is being turned off but you can right click on that and then turn it back on and then in one model you've now got both your notched profile and the uh, the flattened out the flattened out coping profile Woo! hit save because it's autodesk <laughs> and uh, and I think we're good to go. Right, if you jump back over to your frame, you'll notice now that in the in the original frame, you've now got the, the coping profile visible on, on top of the, the solid model there, which, so to turn that off, all you do is just go back into the original model, uh, go to the modeling tab, and then just right click on the coping profile and just hide it, uh, save it. And we'll close down that part there as well. And you can see it's hidden it from view. So that's all fine, that's all fine. And also this is all fully adaptive as well. So if you do change the uh, the the end treatment, it will update. So if we go into, say for example, my skeleton model, which is what's controlling the position and angle of this cross member by this dimension here. So if I change this to something like 850, uh, that's gonna significantly change, drastically change the notch profile. You can see that's now updated. If we go back into this tube, right click and open up that tube. So that hasn't quite opened let's go back into it there we are right so the notch profile has massively changed but then if we turn back on the coping profile that has changed as well to update to the new profile there you are right so how do you actually get this how do you get this printed out well this is the easy bit all you do is just go into a new dwg and then click a base view and then create a base view of the part which i've already got open on the tab at the bottom so it should be listed in the drop down under file so select part number 10 and then we can just change the view of it to be that. In fact, I want to see it from that side. The scale must be one to one, obviously, because you don't want to be printing it out at a reduced scale, so it's got to be one to one. Click OK, drag it into view, and then you can just expand the view that you've created, and then in the drawn view, turn off the original frame member, and then all you're left with is your coping profile. Woohoo! So if we go back to the original frame again, we can change. Uh, that one, this one here, go back into the skeletal file and put this dimension back to 750. So it goes back to being straight. Uh, looks a little bit more dramatic on the drawing. Go back to the drawing, you can see the coping profile updates across the board completely. And uh, yeah, and you can turn it off in here so you never have to see it again. And it just constantly will update your drawing as you're working and as you're changing and doing design changes. It's pretty slick. It's pretty slick, I'd say. Uh, from this point on, as you can see, it's too big for the paper. That's an A3 size sheet of paper, I think, anyway. But we can crop it out, crop that view, and just say I only want to keep, I don't know, that much there. And it'll crop it down. Uh, if you're printing this out just for this profile, you won't need the border. You won't need the title block. So you can just be left with that. Send that to the printer, and then there's your profile. That's your profile. Fully adaptive, fully changeable. It'll update to suit any changes you make to this. Any subtle changes to the end profile will filter through the drawing. You just hit print again and print it off. There you go. That's how I would do a, a profile. You can do it using flat pattern. You can drive the part into a new part and then it, it does thing is oh, it doesn't matter whichever way you go to get to the same end result. Either way, if this original member here, if you were to delete this frame and recreate it, you're going to lose the link to the profile. The, the drawn view on the profile either way so either way there you go that's how you do it that's how i would do it coping profiles for end treatments on tubes 
Uh, yeah, thank you very much. It's, uh, it's not really the most exciting topic I've ever done, but it might help some people. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.